Cup May edition. We are just into the third week competition here. My name's East. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a beautiful sunny day. Just got over a thunderstorm the night before. It is time for some Timmy Tam action. We are headed in this game between Sukli and Jay Doragon. So the two gamers have submitted their teams for the week. We uh, saw a few games earlier in the day and earlier in the week as well. Our first uh, top eight qualification with uh, Ali earning her spot in the top eight. And now these two tamers will try to jockey for position there as well. It's, uh, looks like JD is going to invite first. And Sukli. Oh, uh, J. Dorgon is actually going to be playing on their alt, which their team they submitted is uh, located on. So everyone gets to, everyone gets to to peep the alt. Or uh, J. Drudagon seven three oh nine. In the meantime, um, we are approaching. The end of the group stage of play, then we will have our um, top eight laid out for a prize pool of 225 euros and 310,000 pan suns. So that's pretty exciting. A big thanks, of course, to Tylo and Tem Team, Tem Dot Team, a great team building resource. For uh, helping out and also for putting on this fantastic tournament, as well as being an invaluable uh, website to go to for team building. I used Tim.team to help build my team, and last night I won 100% of my games. Yes, I only played one of them, but that was a guaranteed dub boss man. Okay. We are into the match. Let's get going. So. Oh, let me uh, real quick turn our uh, audio on. Sorry about that. Get that going there. So Sukli running what looks like to be the same team from previous weeks with uh, Mimit, Volfi, as well as a lot of the strong mid-range core without um, Naga and Ragnit. So, Tolkien, Calibus, these Thames looking to slow down uh, Jay Drudagon's team here. Even though they are playing on their alt, this is a, um, a team that does have some familiar faces. JD's team. But it's much more aggro bent. This is the kind of team we might see someone like Ali running in the tournament. Uh, or perhaps Sarizen as well. Um, this team opens with double fire coish and it's going to open that into Sukli's Volfi plus Tolkien combo. Now, double fire coish, of course, one of the deadliest aggressive combos in the game. Synergy master with two Thames uh, and a move that synergizes with with water on fire and it's just a lot of lava, a lot of damage. Not a lot of teams can handle that strength of the opener. We'll see what they decide to do. So, uh, there is a special attack element to the back half of JD's team, and they're going to need to um, apply that pressure to stop Sukli from getting things like their Yowler set up as well. So, no access to Kinu, and Sukli going for a bulky backline of Mimit, Yowler, and. Golzi up against Jay Dorgon. Let's get into it. This is game one of the series. And right away we see the double Koish opener, the fire type, giving them the immunity to burn. A 
as Volpe retreats. And Mimic comes out, so... This Mimic going to turn into a Koish. As Ice Cubes coming out from the Koishes. These Ice Cubes, maybe a bit of a surprise tactic here by JD. They're going to take down the Tolkien. Uh, probably a bit of a surprise there for uh, Sukli as they swapped in the fire resist, but Day Dragon going for the read and putting that Tolkien on ice. Cubes. Uh, so this is kind of a, a difficult spot for Sukli. Uh, the ice cubes are neutral into the fire coish, but that Mimit is almost certainly running a Doppelganger Brooch, so it will score a 50% more effective hit. How is Sukli going to slow down these aggressive openers? Now, we do know that this Yowler is running Clinch. Uh, in all likelihood. So, it very likely will be able to uh, hit back into the of aggro attempts here, but with very little stamina expended, uh, J Dragon manages to score an early kill and really put Sukli on the back foot here. Going to be Lava Wave. Double Lava Wave. And Sukli going for the Hypnosis. That's going to put one of the Koish to sleep. Galar using Show Off, but it uh, almost certainly does not have the gas to bring this home. Um, another Lava Wave from the Koish. Very likely too strong for whatever Galar decides to do. As we see the just raw offensive power of this double Koish lead coming to bear against Sukli. Golzi coming in on the swap. It will be a Hypnosis from the Koish. Targeting Golzi, it goes to sleep. Mimit using an Ice Cubes of their own. And now with the sleeping Golzi, a prime target for a double Lava Wave. And... Sukli without really a very strong counter switch in here. Golzi comes out, Yowler comes in, and this is likely a sacrifice play. But they go the other way, as it will be Ice Cubes, Ice Cubes. Back onto the Koish, and... Mimic going back the other way with Doppelganger Brooch. But these Thames maintaining their stamina, so with no overexerting, KD really just has the opportunity to use Lava Wave to hard OX if they want to. There will be a Lava Wave coming out from the Mimit. That's going to KO Yalar. Mimit going for that Ice Cubes back into Koish, which just simply rests. Not under any pressure. As a now a 5-3 advantage for J Dorigon. Still plenty of stamina left on his Thames here. As the synergy lava wave looking to give up some plus speed. Golzi with the swap out, hoping that. J. Doragon commits the Lava Wave. It does. He does. Koish knocked out. And Mimit also committing to the Lava Wave. That's actually going to be quite slow. A little bit less damage as well due to the overexertion, so... At long last, Mimit Koish is brought low, but at what cost is... Day Dragon with three healthy Tims in the back, and Zukli only having access to a Golzi. No, no buffs, no power-ups on that Golzi. It's feeling pretty sad 
As now Amphitir comes in. Amphitir with quite the opportunity itself. Mimit retreats. Vulcan coming in to inflict some burn upon the Vulfi. Amphitir, faster than Vulfi. Thunder Strike. Knocks down the Mimit. And we're down to just Golzi. And Vulfi versus the world. So this plague aimed for the Mimit. It's the Tolkien instead. With no access to the handcuffs due to the seized effect from Lava Wave. Token free to swap out if it so chooses. Stars Iron Filings is available on the Golzi, as well as uh, Oshidashi, but this is looking like a situation in which Golzi just doesn't have enough. It's Tornado going to take out the Vulpi. So it is Golzi versus four Thames. Golzi does go for the Oshidashi here. That's going to deal some pr pretty sizable damage to Amphitir. As Amphitir just opts to rest. Sparks now applied to the Tolkien. Golzi going for the uppercut. Good damage, but this Sparks Fire Tornado hitting Golzi and just about putting it away as either a Plague, a Thunderstrike, or a Tornado will do so. It is going to be Tornado from Tolkien. Golzi is taken down and a 4-0 Game 1 victory for Jay Drudigon, showing off the aggro look uh, to their team in this game. Don't mind the uh, the Goaties. We're doing a little Goatee radar in the background here. Because Goatee is best. Go move flank. Uh, yeah, so... Game one in the books, uh, relatively quickly. Zookly likely going to have to rethink their approach to the double fire koish lead. We get right into game number two here. Game one, we saw the lash band out. It will be Mimit this time. So, an adjustment already from Zukli. Kinu on their side banned out as well, again. When playing the higher tempo teams, being able to ban out Thames like Kinu is uh, almost invaluable. This could be a tough matchup for Zukli without a Tem like Nagais to force um, JD to ban out Deceit Aura. It's hard for Zukli to uh, maneuver their Thames uh, in, into exactly the right spot, so... Calibus is an option this time around for Sukli, but it and it is going to be picked up. It's uh, got two special attackers staring it down, so that is not the most comforting situation to be in. So we'll see what the plan is. Tolkien gets banned out. And Balash banned out in return as well. It's going to be a bit of a different look for the two tamers here. We won't be seeing any Tolkien. On Zukli's side and on JD's side, of course, no Mimit to double up the power of that Fire Koish. And Zukli, of course, opting to lead with that Golzi this time. It is a perhaps a slightly better board state in which for Golzi to exist, but it has to be careful of the crystal spikes coming out from that mix. Not a pleasant situation to be in at all. And Oshiara picked up last for J Dorigon. Now Golzi up against Mix and Amphitir with Alibus in support. This is game number two. Sukli trying to play for a point. JD trying to secure the three points. Mimit comes in, so that Mimit is going to duplicate the Mix. In comes the Amphitir Plague. It's going to knock Mimit pretty low. And Mix going for the Crystal Spikes will 
the Mimic Mix survive? It does. So Puppet Master now active. Uh, Sukli making that swap in, act, turning on a Puppet Mastered Mimic. She does have a uh, pretty strong Crystal Spikes back into the mix or Amphitere here. And is protected. Or at least that is... Uh, but that is the case, yes, because without Synergy, Quartz Dirt is unable to hit in an AoE, so... D-Dragon only having access to Serbatio's Wrath and perhaps Bright Beam as moves that can hit in an area of effect. So, Tolkien gets the boost. Crystal Spikes. Claiming the Amphitere. And Calibus... Striking onto the token with Toxic Ink. That's going to be a pretty strong Toxic Ink. Healing almost 50% of the token's HP. As Mix now returns to the battle. That sparks up um, token. Definitely providing some difficulty for Sukli as it's covering the switch-ins. Bullsy normally a good switch into a wind attack, but... Not so when um, there's a Crystal Spikes coming to clean it up afterwards. And can Paul the Calibus hang on against the ferocity of the incoming attacks? Let's see what Sukui decides to do. They do switch out. It is going to be Yowler, so likely trying to just survive a turn here on the Yowler. Using it as a damage sponge against aggro. 48% uh, from a plus one tornado is uh, totally normal behavior for a Temtem. Um, there's Quartzer. Quartzer does hit in the AoE. My mistake. Uh, so Mix will be taken down by it. Um, I thought it needed synergy for that, and perhaps so did Sukli, as Mix just stayed in to take the damage. And uh, Golzi coming in to try and get some cleanup crew damage here under the Tolkien, but that may not actually be what's happening here, is Mix outspeeding with spikes. Tolkien does retreat. Move flank coming in. This is going to be easily able to take uh, the hit. Furry Wart active, and it's a Synergy Spark Bullet. Pretty good damage. Psy Surge and Retaliation from the mix. This is going to be very strong damage into Yowler. Enough to take it down. And Sukui down to three Thames against four now. The token a little bit worse for wear. Which does give... <coughs> pardon me. Which does give Calibus some room to operate here. But Calibus... Wolfie and Golzi have a tough task ahead of them. Just this pure damage coming out. Goring, Crystal Spikes. No way Golzi lives that. Down it goes. We can see the, the damage and the pace of play coming out from Jade Dragon's team here. Just a little too much for uh, Sukli's attempts to handle as they're down to just two against four. We'll see what the Tamers decide to do here. So, uh, Sukli likely having to make a couple pretty big reads in order to figure this out. Is Day Dragon just staying in and piling on damage? Just trying to be as efficient as possible. Base jump going before a plague. We'll see if Sukli is able to counteract effectively. They will get a Synergy Aqua Stone. This should take care of the move flank. So, bringing the score down to 3 to 2 with Mix. Feeling a little bit overexerted. Or close to overexerting, rather. Feeling rather low on stamina. Likely unable to take a Sandstorm from Sukli's Volfi and keep ticking, but. A little looming in the back, there's this. 
Tolkien, and Tolkien having access to Tornado here is... Or Fire Tornado, or even a plus one Wind Burst is going to be kind of a problem for J. Doragon. They need to get rid of that Tolkien, and then live to fight another day against Mix and Oshiara. Let's see if they can pull it off. See what the tamers are gonna do here. So this match looking a little bit more promising for Zukli. They're they've got these two Tems left. We do know the Volfi is a little bit slow, so we can say that it's pretty bulky. Gonna need that bulk because a plus one wind attack is likely coming into this Calibus, and combined with the crystal spikes, that might be enough to just send it to the Shadow Realm here. We'll have to see. Quickly going into the reserve time a bit, perhaps doing some sort of calculations. It will be Mix going first. Energy manipulation, trying to control the Volfi perhaps for later on in the game. Falcon with the Fire Tornado. Big speed here. That's enough to bring down the Volfi, so. No more Volfi. And Calibus taking the revenge with the Toxic Ink. I will take care of the Tolkien. So now we see a 2v1 Oshiara and Mix against Calibus. Furry Wart is active, so if Calibus. If Oshiara has access to Blizzard, that's going to deal some pretty good damage to Calibus. Energy manipulation coming out. It will be a Blizzard from Oshiara. And that's plenty of damage. Toxic Ink retaliating from the Calibus, but... Reactive Vial taking away that Toxic Weakness and... Energy manipulation causing the overexertion, so this will be... A another victory for Jay Dorgon. GG's to both players. Uh, as we can see very clearly on display in these two games, um, JD showing the just absolute speed and power of their aggressive lineup. Securing the 2-0 victory, picking up the three points in the standings. So we do have some uh, Timmy Tam action for you later on today as well. As we can see uh, at uh, 8 UTC, or I guess we could say 8 in the evening UTC, 8 p.m., we've got a Wiki Colonel versus Subaki chan. That's some Group D action there. And again, GG's to both players. And that's going to be coming up later as well. So again, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, uh, Tylo, for putting on organizing the tournament, and we'll hope to see everybody back here in, I guess, close to six or so hours. Anyways, uh, you can see the time there. We'll see you then. Until then, uh, my name is East, and we're signing off.